So promises of passive income on Amazon lead to death threats, FTC says. So the FTC has filed a lawsuit against Ascend Ecom, an automation company that promised customers passive income by launching and managing Amazon storefronts. The company is accused of making false claims about earnings using deceptive marketing practices and even threatening clients who posted negative reviews. One customer, Jamal Sanford, faced terrifying threats, including death threats after leaving a negative review. And this case is part of the FTC's broader crackdown on e-commerce scams. And uh, if I scroll down here just a little bit, it was interesting that this guy posted a negative review of this Amazon automation company, and they started contacting him, claiming to be a Russian shadow team, and were showing him his home address, social security number, where his daughter goes to college, and basically threatening his life if he didn't oh. take down this bad review. So very scary stuff. So what are you guys' thoughts on the new, not only this news, but these automation, Amazon automation platforms in general? Why don't okay, we throw so it over to uh, you, Leslie? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, thank you, because we deal with this all day long, yeah. y'all. And first, I have to tell you, because people who read this story and they're shocked by the death threat part and the Russian shadow team, this mm -hmm. is all real. I just want to assure people who think, oh, it couldn't have been that bad. It didn't really happen like that. This is drama. This is real. And I have seen similar things like this from these kind of companies, but also other kinds of sellers on Amazon for years. Um, mm -hmm. I have worked with many clients who have had death threats, have had threats to their relatives, their elderly parents and their children. Um, and this whole Russian shadow team, that is real too. There are groups in Russia and Eastern Europe that you can hire to be your bad guy hackers because they're never going to face any legal ramifications for it. They're never going to get arrested for these things. So if, if someone wants to you know, demand money from you, I'll fix the listing that I hijacked if uh, you pay me a thousand Bitcoin, they don't do that themselves. They use these Russian hackers and the hackers do it for them. And then sometimes what's really cool is the Russian hackers will even say, if you'll give me another thousand, I'll tell you who hired me Dang. to do to you. <laughs> so um, oh, so I, just, I just want anyone who thinks this is drama on the part of the seller, this is not, I mean, I can't swear to this case, but these things happen all the time. So these passive income guys are so dangerous to sellers, not because they're going to, you know, put a horse head in your bed um, if you complain about them, but because they set up these storefronts that are doomed to fail and they're mm -hmm. going to get suspended because Amazon's really great at catching on to the way that they set these businesses up. And Amazon isn't playing anymore, so they hold your funds forever and ever. Mm -hmm. And what's super dangerous is if you give these guys your credit card. So if you're in one of these, um, even if you trust the guys doing it, y'all make sure that if you've given them your credit card, you cancel that credit card. Yeah. Because they'll use that credit card to buy inventory for other stores or to make purchases from other stores that they're doing the drop shipping model, right? And they'll do it for their other clients' stores. And when Amazon sees that, Amazon sees it as money laundering, y'all. So then they shut it down all for fraud and money laundering. And you never see any of that money inventory or anything ever again. Mm. And in the meantime, they've got your credit card. And so you have the charges on your credit card. You have the money you gave them and the money you spent for inventory. That's what how people end up out hundreds of thousands of dollars instead of just, you know, 10 or 20 that you would think it would be for that inventory outlay. Okay, I'll shut up. Sorry, y'all. I get really emotional about this one because people get so scammed. It hurts my heart. Well, that's why Todd asked you, right? I mean, you are the, you are the front lines on this sort of stuff. Well, and where it really hurts is there are private label sellers who need more cash flow and they don't want to take on a lot more debt or yeah. they're trying to figure out how to earn their way into that cash flow. And a lot of private label sellers, they don't have the background of doing the, the hustle with the wholesale or 
you yeah. know, God forbid the RA or whatever that you would use to generate cash. And so they, they are looking for something and someone comes to them and makes this great pitch. And it sounds so awesome. It's passive income. They run it for you. Cool. But they'll have it be the same storefront as their private label. And so yeah. then when they get caught on all of the strategies that people use for the passive income that Amazon doesn't allow and eventually shuts down, then it takes down their private label brand too. And I've had y'all more than a handful of clients, 10, 12 clients who private label this has happened to think about how much they invested in their private label products. That brand is mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Yep. Here's the good like, news. That I think with this, you know, I'll just be clear. If anybody's watching that wants to do this, don't do this. Yeah. So yeah. first do that first. But at the end of the day, Amazon doesn't want this either. Uh, they don't seem to be doing a whole lot to prevent it, but they don't want this. And so when Amazon doesn't want something, things will change eventually. It seems to be going pretty slow. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other side, uh, it, it's interesting to see the government get involved. They seem to always be like uh, three or four years late on these things and yeah, uninformed. Sure. But I did have an interesting conversation uh, last week with the chief of staff with the U.S. senator about some Amazon issues that I just saw that are happening. Um, and I said, the Amazon business is fine. It's tough, just like any business. But the sellers are deathly afraid of, of being suspended and having funds frozen. And this is one of those mm -hmm. things, that, of course. And one of the things that's interesting that he told me was, this is what Eric, if you, if you want a meeting, the senator can set up a meeting with Amazon if you want that to happen. He, he just said that Amazon, Amazon <laughs> is afraid of the U.S. Senate uh, for all the things that the U.S. Senate can do. And part of that is they're afraid because the Senate doesn't always necessarily know what's right. Uh, mm -hmm. They take actions that, that wouldn't be great for Amazon or even sellers or customers, but they would take action if, if they felt like Amazon was out defrauding people. And, and things like this make Amazon look bad. And so I'm, I'm anxious to see the FTC come down very swiftly and just see if we can end some of these things from happening. I'd love that too. Yeah, it it would be nice, uh, you know, and I don't, they're not going to be able to stop this kind of thing uh, completely, no matter if it's legal or illegal, yep. you know, there's drugs are rampant in this country and those have been illegal forever, but really it's about, I think, getting the word out and letting people know to watch out for this kind of thing. I mean, myself personally, just friends on Facebook, I've talked to people out of doing this kind of thing, you me know, too. They see that I'm an Amazon expert Same. and so they message me about it because they're looking at buying one of these automation services. And I was like, no, just don't do it. Even if they have the right motivations, because there there are companies out there that are not, you know, Russian hacks and stuff and you're going to go out and kill your daughter or something. But it's just they don't have the motivation to make it succeed. And they're just they're setting you up to to fail. Like Eric said, the. Amazon is hard. It's a lot of work. And these companies for $30,000, they're not going to put in all the work that's necessary to make it successful. Yep. It's like the uh, new age version of a Ponzi scheme. Instead of e-com, it's e-pon. You're welcome for that. <laughs>